Hey, this is Scott from Watch You Seek, and today we are going to look at the fascinating world of stopwatches. Well, not actually. This is a CT Scuderia Master Time watch. Hang on one second, let me show you. So here it is on the strap. So this is the CT Scuderia Master Time. And an interesting story about this is when I got it in, I put it on. My son walks in the room and I said, hey, Kai, what do you think of this watch? And he goes, that's not a watch. And he starts walking away from me. And I'm like, wait, wait, what do you mean it's not a watch? And he turns around, and he says, dad, that's a pocket watch on a strap. So my eight-year-old boy completely understood the concept of what Enrico, and I apologize, I'm going to mispronounce the last name, Margatelli. Uh, he's the designer of this watch, and uh, it really, he's, his concept is taking the vintage and bringing it into the modern. So taking the vintage look of a track time stopwatch to record your lap times from your car or your motorcycle. They're really, the, the design inspiration is it really the Italian cafe racer, kind of a, a lifestyle kind of a thing with this and this is where this all comes from. So let's take a look at the uh, case dimensions and talk about size of this guy. Now first off, it's a large watch. So this guy comes in at 44 millimeters in diameter. It has a strap width here of 26. It has a lug to lug width, which is pretty short for a watch this size of 52 millimeters but this is 15 millimeters high. So it is a very tall watch. They did a couple things to make it actually fairly comfortable to, to wear. So if we look at these lugs here, you can see the lugs sharply downturn here, and they are close, very close to the the edge of this watch. So they are not much farther out than the diameter of, uh, of the watch here. It is a real unique design. So this is a, a polished, sorry, stainless steel. And so here it is. I mean, the, the, the idea is that this center portion here is your traditional stopwatch type of a thing. And then this is uh, I heard Enrico in an interview refer to this as horns so that on the top and the bottom there are brushed pieces here that are attached via Allen. So if we look here, you can see we've got a, an Allen screw there, there's one there, there, and then one on the side. And that's what attaches the lugs, this, this whole assembly which holds the lugs, of course, then which holds your strap. And we have the same thing on the other side. We've got some Allens here and then a, a big Allen on there. This hugs the, the case here. And an interesting thing is that you can see that the crystal, we have a completely flat sapphire crystal here. The crystal sits proud of this, this case here, the, the brush case, probably about a millimeter. But the, these horns that are attached to this part rise up to kind of work as a crystal guard which is, I thought was a, a pretty cool design. Uh, the other thing that we have here is the pushers. So we have the stop start pusher here. So going back to what this is uh, designed to be a, a stopwatch, your thumb really rests right there to stop and start. You'll notice that the, the pushers are of different sizes. So your stop start pusher sits proud here, very easy. To, to activate and your reset, which is a little shorter here, so you're not accidentally going to, to hit it. Now with most chronographs, unless it's a flyback, you want to stop, start with this one, and while the, your chronograph is running, you don't want to, to hit that guy. So I kind of like the way that it is. I like the way it's just shorter. So nice, nice design on that. You've got your, your crown here at 12 with a signature. Let's see if we can get on there. We got the CT. And then, of course, this is the, the lanyard strap to where you would hang that if you were, um, you know, using this as a stopwatch. When 
you want to adjust the time. Let's see, stopwatches. I pull, it's hard to, to activate it. This is a screw down crown. It's hard to get at it with the, this little lanyard attachment. So I just push it forward here and then it's a screw down crown. I can unscrew that and adjust the time as needed there. We'll move it there. So the back side of the case, you can see we have an exhibition case back here with some, probably, I'm gonna guess these are painted colors of the Italian flag. So we've got the, the red, the white, and the green. Uh, we have the black in here. The rotor is black as well. So nice shape there. The shape of the, the case, you can see how rounded it is. Well, if we can focus, there we go this part is very rounded and I'll talk about it a little later when I talk about my wearing experience, but that really helps to make that a, a, this a comfortable watch to wear. So the dial here, so it is a glossy black dial with white printing on it and you'll see there's no color. There's, it's just black and white. All the hands are painted white. We have around the outside, instead of hours, we have minutes just exactly kind of what a, a stopwatch would be. In the subdial here at three, we have hours. We have the time running seconds here at six, and we have the chronograph minutes here at nine. Uh, there are minute marks as we go around, and then there is smaller minute markings in, the, uh, in between each minute mark. We'll run this. The stopwatch second, counter goes all the way out to the outside so it's real easy to see where you're stopping and starting that. Your minutes hand runs all the way out and then your hour hand is a little shorter in there. So nice proportion on the hands, easy to tell what each one is doing. I am going to back up my time. Hang on one second, let me come back. Okay, here we go. I just wanted to move my hand so we could get a better look at the, the minute window here at nine o'clock. So you'll see, let's see, I'm not gonna scratch anything, but you see these little hashtags here. So there's the 10 minutes, there's the 20, and then that would be five. So this hashtag, this mark here, that's actually two and a half minutes, and that's seven and a half minutes. It kind of bugs me that they did that, and it's interesting because a very, very popular watch that was just introduced this year by Tag Heuer, the Octavia, it does the same thing. I'm not sure, I just prefer, for me, I would just prefer hashtags, you know, little markings for each minute. I think it would be easier to read. And so these little tiny marks that are in here are actually half seconds. So I think it, it complicates the reading a little bit of your minute hand. They did the same printing here with the seconds, and I don't mind it on the seconds, right? It's, it's just a design. But I think if they simplified it a little bit, it would be easier to, to read the minutes there. So it's, that's probably one of my biggest things that I would change with this watch if I could. The hands, high contrast between the black and the, the white hands. So it, it's easy to read at a glance. There is no loom keeping with the concept, I believe, of what a stopwatch would have, right? Back in the, in the 50s or 60s, you wouldn't have loom on your stopwatch, so you're not gonna have loom on, on this watch. So, so that's the dial. Let's take a, a look at the strap. First off, I, I just wanna say I love this strap. I, I want this strap. In fact, I went to the, the CT Scuderia website to see if they do sell the aftermarket strap, and it looks like they do, but this is a 26 millimeter uh, width here on the strap, so that wouldn't work with any of my watches. But it is a, a very thin strap, and it's a embossed leather, but I love this alligator embossing. It, it's, I'd call it a semi-gloss. It's not a glossy strap, but it has a, a, a you know, it picks up the, the light a little bit. We've got the, the, uh, the thread going through here and then also a nice little marking there. We have a large buckle here, similar, I, I guess I'd call this a Panerai style. We have a fixed keeper 
and a floating keeper. And let's see if I can move that up. And it is a, a signed buckle here. The movement in the CT Scuderia Master Time is the ubiquitous ETA 7750. And you can see that if we just turn this sideways. So now we have our pusher, stop, start, our reset and crown at three o'clock. And then the running seconds at nine. This is just like any other 7750 you see out there, but because they did this bullhead design, it sits like this. It has this different layout of the registers. So the 7750 here, you know, this watch or the, the watch, the, the movement's been around since the, what, 73. It's reliable. It works day in and day out. It's a cam actuated chronograph, uh, power reserve of about 44 hours. You can get it serviced anywhere. It's robust. It's a, a I mean, a, a, a great workhorse chronograph movement. Not much to be said about that. So, uh, We'll just move on to my wearing experience with this CT Scuderia Master Time. Okay, here's the Master Time on my wrist. And first off, this is a large watch. I mean, it's 44 millimeters in diameter, 15 millimeters tall. If you're not into wearing or comfortable wearing a large watch, then this may not be the one for you. That being said, I was very surprised at how comfortable this sits on the wrist. I have a, a large Tag Heuer Day Date Carrera 7750, and, and this actually rides on my wrist a little better. And so I really had to look and figure out what it is. And, and here's what, what I think is doing this. The lugs are very short, right? They, they go down, they slope down. They're very close to this case. And then where the spring bar attaches is right at the very, very tippy end of this, is tippy end a word? Right at the end of this lug. So the way that it grips onto my wrist, the strap, as you can see here, now yes, this is a bunch of a weight sitting on top of the wrist, and that's really where I do notice it when you're, when you're moving your wrist. There, it's, it, it is heavy, but this lug design, the fact that they put the spring bar right at the edge of this lug and a 26 millimeter wide strap really helps to hold it onto the wrist. Now, one thing I did find is that if you're, say, wearing this to work and you're going to be typing, working on a desk, when you rotate your hand like this, it's gonna hit the desk, right? So that really, that part doesn't work. So just keep that in mind. But for going out on motorcycle rides and out in town and running around, it's fine. I, I didn't even try to put this underneath a, uh, a long sleeve. I don't think that's gonna work, but certainly other, under a, a leather jacket probably would work just fine. So yes, it's a big watch. Uh, it's tall, so the, the weight is high, but because of the way they designed this piece here with the lugs, pleasantly surprised at how it wears. So good design for a heavy watch. And the fact that this is a bullhead design with the crown and the pushers up at the top, this rounded edge here, when, when I move my wrist up like that, I don't have anything sticking out to, to poke at the top here. So this is all smooth, it's brushed, it it's, has a nice radius to it. So very comfortable. So if I could, what would I change on this watch? Well, you probably guessed it first thing. Uh, I would change would be the minute counter here. Just make it a little more legible. Although, you know, I was doing some timing. We just got this new pot that boils water and I was seeing how quickly it can boil some water. And after a while, you kind of get to know where the, the two and a half minute mark, the seven and a half. And, and so I'm sure if you use this for a while, then you would quickly get used to, to uh, reading the correct time on there. It is a thick watch, right? It would be cooler if it was a little thinner, but 
you know, I'm, I'm sure Enrico designed it this way because he wanted a big, thick watch like what a, a stopwatch would be. So that's, that's part of the design. The rotor, it's a black rotor back there. It'd be nice if there was some engraving on there. I don't know, a, a Italian flag or a, I don't know, a motorcycle or something to, to kind of go along, the, even a logo or something, because it's just... Yeah, we can see the movement and, and we have the, the black uh, anodized top plate there and then, and then the rotor, but it would be nice to, to have something on there. So what would I keep? Well, I, I think the overall design is, is a lot of fun. I mean, this bull head design, it, when you pick it up and you're not wearing it just to stop, start the, the chronograph, it just fits in your hand really nice. So if you weren't using your phone to record lap times or, or something, you know, this, this is a neat option. I love this strap. This strap is so cool. It, it really is a strap. I think I need to look and see. M m leave a comment below if you know of, of somebody that's making straps like this in a variety of different sizes that I could use with some other watches. Next, let's uh, get to my takeaway. So my takeaway with the CT Scuderia Master Time, it's a fun watch. It's different, right? Wearing this on the wrist, it, it, it doesn't look like any other watch that I have. Uh, so I like the uniqueness of it. I was pleasantly surprised on the wearing comfort on it. So, so that definitely has a, a plus going for it. The fact that it's got a 7750 in it, so it's an automatic mechanical chronograph movement that I can get serviced virtually anywhere. It's robust. So it's got a lot going for it. There is another dial option within this collection. So there is a white dial with the, the black, you know, everything's just reversed here. And they do make a version with a stainless steel bracelet. Uh, I, I think I would prefer, in my experience, I like leather on bigger, heavier watches. I find that it, it conforms to your wrist a little better, but I haven't tried the bracelet, so I don't know. So this is the CT Scuderia model CS20508. This retails for $3,295 US dollars. Hey, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and leave comments below. And thanks for watching.